Hello YouTube, Drake Claw Thing here, and tonight I'm counting down my top 10 favorite Final Fantasy female characters. Much as with the games list, there's a lot that goes into this list, primarily character development, personality, and battle skills of course. I guess physical design is a part of it, but I'm not really grading them based on how attractive they are. This is not a top 10 hot list, if it was, it would be completely different. The reason I'm not going to be doing a top 10 hottest female list is for three main reasons. First, of course, that's a little sexist, and second, well, physical beauty is very subjective. Everyone has a different list. The third reason, well, it's Final Fantasy. Look around and find me a female character that isn't attractive. She doesn't count! Uh... So, without further ado, let's get to the top ten list. I won't be going as in detail with the game since this is a longer list and thus we have less time to get through them all, but I'm still gonna talk about them quite a little bit. So, let's go. Starting us off at number 10 is Beatrix. I actually had to think for a moment about who number 10 should be, and when comparing other potentials like Cisne and Yuna, Beatrix won over. I don't need to explain why she's here, of course. Anyone who's played FF9 knows she is supremely badass. She curb stomps your party in three battles, barely breaking a sweat, and deals out one strong one-hit KO attacks like it's nothing. She wields the Save the Queen sword, she commands the Alexandrian army, and she's a one-woman army in her own right. When she realizes how far Braun is gone, she reforms and then you get to command her power as a party member, and she's no less powerful for it. Sure, her MP runs dry like a leaky gas tank, but she still has all her awesome swordplay skills along with powerful magic like Hiraga and Holy. Beatrix's role is relatively minor, but she really makes an impression with her awesome swordplay skills and the three hopeless boss fights against her. If you're looking for the most badass paladin in the series, you found her. Number 9 on the list is Prish. I admit this ranking is based solely on her duodecim incarnation, not her FF11 one. So you may think it's a bit unfair, but hey, my list, my rules. Prish is funny, spunky, and cool. She's mouthy and cocky and has great dialogue to make a minor role very memorable. She's also very badass in battle, with a lot of customizable hand-to-hand -hand skills and speed and power to go with them. Her FF11 incarnation, from what I've read, is pretty cool too, her story arc sounds good. For those who are unfamiliar with the game, the idea is that Prish is immortal, frozen at a young age due to magicite crystallized in her chest, and she's hated for being known as the Keeper of the Apocalypse, the mortal vessel for the Twilight God Promathia, who has prophesied to one day to be reborn through her and destroy the world. Prish aids the player in destroying Promathia at the end of the Chains of Promathia expansion main quest. And by the way, that's where her EX burst is taken from. She throws the Star of Tavnazia a magicite at Promathia to finally destroy him after she uses nullifying dropkick during the battle to nullify his defensive barriers. Yeah, Frisch is so badass her dropkicks render gods mortal. See, watch my vids and learn new stuff, aren't I awesome? Well, so is Prish. She's simply very cool and very funny. Number 8 is Riku. She's an invaluable party member in Final Fantasy X. Being one of only three characters usable in water, she can use Albed potions to heal 1000 HP around, and her 8 mix overdrive is all around awesome. It's great to combine items and see what pops up, usually a series of status buffs or a powerful attack. The main reason Riku is here though I admit is due to FF10's plot. I am tolerant of all religious beliefs and do not wish to offend anyone when I say this, but the world of FF10 only works if the citizens act like blind religious puppets who believe anything they're told. And most of them are. Yevon is clearly a pack of lies and hypocrisy to an outsider like Titus, but he doesn't want to offend people in this foreign land because they love Yevon. Riku does not, and it is such a breath of fresh air to have a point out that the way of life so many people practice in Spira does not make any sense when you actually think for a minute. And while everyone else is moody and somber, Riku is cheerful, and there's a good reason for it if you examine her dialogue and talk to her. So, Riku's here for being cool in battle, and being a refreshing contrast in personality to the rest of the party. Coming in at 7 is Celeste. 
As rankings before and after her on this list will demonstrate, I have a soft spot for strong warrior women in video games, and Celis is definitely that. She subverts the typical damsel in distress nonsense by initially rejecting Locke's help, and staunchly being aggressive against the idea of him being in love with her when Edgar brings it up. She's haughty and proud, but is a true good person deep down, disgusted with the Empire and unwilling to go as far as they are in battle. Her character arc makes her a good foil to Terra, though almost opposite in personality, but learns similar lessons about learning to trust others and find love. And just like Terra, she's a beast in battle, with an ability of limited use, but skill in both physical prowess and spellcasting. It's a pity we don't learn the full extent of how she came to serve in the Empire, though, or why she defected. Celeste, alas, is one of the few characters in Final Fantasy VI who doesn't get her backstory very well explored. If Square Enix ever remakes Final Fantasy VI, and they damn well better someday, they should bump Celeste to full deuteragonist alongside Terra and explore her story and their past together more, because we do know they know each other somehow. In the meantime, what we do see of her makes her one very cool general to lead your party. Number 6 is Lightning, Square Enix's new cash cow they're milking for all they can get. I apologize for that disgusting mental image. Really, what can I say here? By this point, I think everyone and their mother has an opinion on Lightning. Some love her, some hate her. Me, of course, I like her. She develops well, she's a powerful warrior, a strong leader, and she has an awesome design. What keeps her from being high on this list is something I alluded to in my top 5 games review. Her character development is rather rushed, she doesn't really grow as a person as much as she cools down from the hell of the opening sequence. And we learn in flashbacks that the week or so leading up to the game has been about the shittiest week of her life. There's also the problem that we never learn what type of person Lightning is normally when her world isn't crumbling around her. This damages the value of her character development since we don't know what she's developing from. But she's still very badass, very strong, and a very cool character to have in the lead. Ranking in at number 5 is Princess Garnet. She's once again a well-developed character, going from a sheltered and naive princess to an independent and clever young lady. She learns not to blame herself for things she cannot control and to be comfortable with who she is and who she wants to be instead of who she's expected to be. She has to lead her kingdom someday, but first she has to learn to take care of herself, and that's just what she does. Her personality, attitude, and physical appearance shift drastically over the course of the story, making a very well-written character arc. And on the subject of physical appearance, I like that she's more classically pretty than the outright hot females of many Final Fantasy games. Second, I don't know about you, but personally I prefer the long-haired look. Her idolons are awesome, commanding the Guard King of Dragons and a Transformer at the peak of her power, and her healing is invaluable, allowing her to be an important party member even before her character growth to be a stronger person. Garnet is just all around a great character. Number 4 is Ash, the true hero of Final Fantasy XII. She has very strong character development throughout the game and at what gets her on the list. She starts off antisocial, haughty, arrogant, angry, and vengeful. In a word, she's a bitch. But she grows out of it as she comes to realize what her quest for revenge is costing her, namely the spirit of the country she's trying to restore. And at the same time, she befriends the party members and comes to see them as comrades and friends, not just allies of convenience. What makes FF12's plot so unique is that eventually Ash gives up the chance to, re to get what she wants the entire game, because she realizes how hollow and pointless a goal it's been to chase. The scene where she stays her hand at the Suncrest shows how far she's come since you first met her. As a sub-note, if you've ever read the Final Fantasy XII manga, which is linked in the vid summary if you didn't know it existed, Ash is terribly mischaracterized. She's weak, foolish, and is looked down on others for it. It's really pretty disgusting. I love the manga's expansion of unseen events, like the fight between Gabranth and Bosch the night Romanus was killed, but Ash is almost unrecognizable. Her most important contribution to the manga is fan service and really blink one at that. In the game, however, she is one awesome lady of war, and a great hero. Number 3 is Aerith, and when I say Aerith, I mean the Final Fantasy VII Aerith. Much like Cloud and Sephiroth, Square Enix has shifted her personality greatly in the expanded universe, making her generically sweet and innocent. 
I hate characters defined by nothing more than being warm and loving. It's Final Fantasy, most of the playable cast are nice people like that. It doesn't make them interesting. Aerith wasn't innocent in Final Fantasy VII. She threatened to rip off Don Corneo's balls. She was awesome. She was caring, spiritual, and sweet, of course, but she was also stubborn, witty, flirty, and independent. She cared about her friends, but wasn't going to back down from anything and be intimidated by anyone. One of my favorite quotes in the game is where she stands up to Sephiroth at the Temple of the Ancients. And I'll note that my very first Final Fantasy fanfic, linked in the vid summary because I like attention, <laughs> again has her refusing to quiver in the face of Sephiroth's threats. Aerith is just a really cool, developed, and memorable character. I didn't cry at her death because I knew it was coming, but it was still heartbreaking to see my favorite character in the game meet such an untimely end. Number 2 on the list is Rydia. First let me make it clear I was a fan of Rydia before the DS version made her hot. Although for the record... <laughs> Rydia's summon skills were the pinnacle of badassery in the series at that point, and they would be for quite a few games to come. Final Fantasy VI's espers were lame, but in Final Fantasy IV, Rydia was rocking the powers of the elements at her fingertips and could unleash them at will to devastate enemies. Her return as an adult is one of the most iconic moments of the game. While you found out other party members had survived, Edward telling you that he saw Rydia be swallowed by Leviathan makes it clear she's dead and not coming back. Then suddenly she does, just in time to save Cecil from death at Golbez's hands, returning the favor from when he protected her at Kaipo and revealing her magical skills to have greatly improved. And from then on until the end of the game, she proves herself one truly badass mage. Wrapping up the list at number 1 is Terra, heroine of Final Fantasy VI. She tops the list because I feel she has some of the most striking and developed character growth in the entire series. I could write an essay on why I think that, and in fact I have. See the video summary for a link. For an abridged version, Terra's journey from a frightened girl to a determined and heroic young woman is very inspiring and well written. One of my favorite things in fiction is when the main villain is a twisted mirror of the main hero a shadow of what they might have become in a different circumstance. Terra is given that in Kefka, and it's a great story arc for her too, because it reinforces how great her character development is. She's surrounded by people who have love and friendship in their lives, but has trouble feeling it herself, and worries that something is wrong with her. The children of Mobilis help her understand what gave the rest of the party such strength and courage, the cause of fighting for those you care for. Terra's reason for fighting is truly selfless. She doesn't fight for herself, she fights for the hopes and dreams of others and to make sure they can live in a better world. Add into that an elegant and beautiful character design, especially in Dissidia, badass battle skills both physically and magically to make her one of Six's best characters as well as one of my Dissidia mains, and a sweet but determined and likable personality, and she's just an all-around awesome character. And so YouTube, that has been my list of the top female characters in the Final Fantasy series. Much as list the games list, just because you didn't see your favorite female on this list doesn't mean that I hate them. There are many that I hope will burn for eternity and torment in the pits of hell, but I don't hate all of them, I just like some more than others. In particular, there is one female character I'm sure you've noticed is not on this list. And I don't hate her, I just find her a very bland and uninteresting character and think her sex appeal is way overblown. Though as I said before, yes, physical beauty is very subjective. Once again YouTube, this has been Drake Clawfang, and look in the future cause I'll probably be doing a top 10 list like this for the males. Ciao and thanks for watching.